Welcome back to my uh, build series on making a teardrop trailer for winter camping. So last time we got the uh, the frame for the chassis all welded up. We got the crossbars in. I got a few more crossbars uh, put in in between that one and this one. Um, there's still one to go because I want to save that for the same time that I do the um, the tongue welding. So that speaking of the tongue, that is our next step. We want to get the tongue in. We want to get it, you know, fully welded uh, both to the chassis and to the coupler. And so that's what I'm going to be doing right now. Okay, so I've got this uh, loosely fitted here just to get some sort of sense of what's going to be going on. Now one thing I'm struggling with a bit is the coupler itself. Now if I pull this away, I want you to take a look at one thing. I'm not sure how well it shows up on the camera. Let's just slide this out. These edges are severely rounded. The steel that we're using for the A-frame, this isn't really rounded at all. It's a nice, you know, not sharp, but pretty, pretty abrupt edge. So there's pretty much no way that we can get that bar without doing some serious grinding, which I think would, would damage the uh, integrity of the bar. We can't get that bar flush up against the top and the sides. So we have to pick which side, you know, what, what are we going to do? Are we going to weld it to the top more or to the sides? Now if I slide this back into place a bit, if I hold this up against the sides so that it's flush, I've got all of this welding surface that I can weld on, which is, you know, that's good. That's a lot of surface. Um, this, if I had it flush against the top, it would only be, you know, this width, which is far, far less. So that's what we kind of have to uh, choose between is, you know, that big weld or the small weld in the top. And I think it's a pretty obvious selection at this point. So I'm going to, um, you know, assume that we're going to have that coupler kind of lifted up a little bit over these um, the A-frame. Because that's the only way we can get it to fit properly. The next thing we want to figure out is we want to get the A-frame clamped to the coupler and clamped to the chassis so that we have um, an idea of you know what the angle is going to be for the A-frame so that we can then make our cuts on the far end of these beams so that it's flush with the chassis. And then we're going to have you know a weld being able to go up and down and also a weld across on the bottom. The top's going to be hanging over because it's too tall. See, that's a pretty good cut right there. That looks like it fits really well. Ooh. So close to getting this thing assembled and ready to be flipped. Just got to do the finish this up, get the rust proofing on here, and I'll be all set to go. Okay, so I got both pieces cut now. And the next thing I got to do is get it all clamped up together. I'm just using this wood to protect my uh, clamps here so that they don't get melted with the welder.
about right. Okay, we're ready to get this tacked up. Oh, one thing I forgot, very important. We have to do a measurement from the hub to the coupler uh, from both sides and make sure that's an equal measurement. If it's not, then you know you can get a bunch of sway. It just it won't be it won't be right. So let's double check that too while we're here. So yeah, I'd say we're definitely good. This is all in the right spot. It's clamped in the right spot. So I'm going to start with those welds over here, um, but I have to head out to the store first, so I'll be back to do that later tonight. Oh, that's so much nicer. So it's about, uh, I think, 27 degrees outside right now, and there's no insulation in this garage. So this is going to be super nice. Oh, it's going to be so nice. Uh, I think it's time to start the welding. That's a big piece. say by the time we had to do the important stuff, we finally learned how to weld. Here's the quality control to come and inspect my work. <laughs> Somebody needs to. <laughs> Serious welds right there. Doesn't that look good though? <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. Her is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> back from the store and ended up getting this metal rod and this uh, flat piece of steel here. And the metal rod, what I'm going to try to do with this is basically fabricate a hook of some kind that I can weld to the tongue that will um, hold the, the safety chain on. So I'm going to end up cutting these into, I'm going to try maybe three pieces and see if I can form a, um, a hook of sorts. All right, so here's the plan. That's the centerpiece. Whew, they're a little, a little hot. A little bit spicy. Anyway, you get the point. So I'm gonna try to get this welded up, and then when we put it on the uh, on the chassis on the on the tongue, we'll smooth off any um, any of these bottom edges and get them. Ooh, man. Get their angles fixed up. And there we go. We got ourselves a little mount. Now the uh, the bottom isn't exactly flat, so I'm gonna have to uh, do a little grinding on that. But I think overall that works out pretty well. Uh oh. Is it gonna fit? I think the weld might get it, make it too thick. I'll grind that down a little bit. There we go. And there we go, finished product. Chain's on there. It's not moving at all. Both sides, independent. For our rust proofing, we're gonna be using this. 
It's a cold galvanizing com- compound by Rust-Oleum. That's what it's called. And uh, what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to use some sandpaper to rub off any rust we can find on the on the steel. And there is, at least on the on the channel iron, there's a lot. Um, I'm not sure about the rest. I think I saw a little bit. But we're just going to give it a nice little rub down. And then we're going to coat the whole thing in this galvanizing compound. And hopefully that should keep rust away for you know, at least several years. Um, I don't know how well it's going to hold up to the abuses of rocks and salt and everything flying up on the from the road on it. But, you know, we'll see. I'm sure we'll get at least a year out of this, this coating. And uh, if it doesn't work out, then we'll have to treat it with something else later down the road. But this is what we're going to start with. And also with this, supposedly you're not... You don't need to put uh, an outside coating on it, like a paint or anything like that. You can just stick with just this. So that's what we're going to do. And it wasn't too much. It was like six bucks, seven bucks, something like that. Okay, so everything's all sanded down. Uh, we're ready to get uh, spray painting. I got the heater running over there. Uh, it's about 40 degrees out. The the paint is supposed to be applied at 50 degrees. So, gotta get a little bit warmer here. So yeah, I'm just gonna get some tarps down. I got a, a painting tarp up there. And uh, just start spray painting. It needs two coats. It needs a few minutes to dry in between each coat. And it should be pretty simple, straightforward. The rain just started coming down. So I don't think we'll give it a test run today, but we'll at least be able to uh, get it flipped over, get the wheels on, get it ready for tomorrow. So I think that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, the next episode, we should be able to start, you know, getting a little bit of the wood on. I think maybe we still got the lighting kit we got to deal with, but I might hold off on that just because I want to want to get some of the wooden structure, you know, moving. I, I want to see this thing start getting taller. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one, and uh, I hope you're uh, also looking forward to the next one as much as I am. Start seeing a little bit of structure come along. All right, catch you on the next one. All right.